Hello there, people of the universe. My name is Mike Sfy, and welcome to the Justice League discussion. I'm talking about the version that came out in 2017, the version in theatres, the only version to exist. <laughs> ha! April Fools! No. No. The only version to exist came out in 2021. For some reason, they gave trailers in 2016 and 17, and it took a, a good extra three years to come out. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why they did that. But to be honest, I don't know why WB do a lot of the things that they do. But no, in all seriousness, given that it's April Fool's Day today, I figured why not actually try and say good things about the film because I don't like that a lot of fans have this mentality where you're not allowed to enjoy the film. You're not allowed to like it in any shape or form. And that's not fair because I've asked people, like, oh, what's one good thing you could say about it? And they say, oh, the end credits. And I'm like, that's not what I asked. That's just a sarcastic answer. Like, for me, the best thing about it, and given that I've now seen the true version, it is hard to, it, it's hard to find anything, but I can do it. It's like Batman and Robin. It's a bad film, but there, there are elements of it that you can enjoy. It's hard, but there are elements. So with... Justice League, if you, for a split second, ignore all the behind the scenes shit, I know it's very important, but if for a split second you forget about that and you, you ignore it, for me, the worst things about Justice League are the CGI of Henry Cavill's face, the CGI of Steppenwolf, and then, without getting specific, the poor handling of Batman and just all the characters, if you want to get specific, like the whole... I don't like how, in that scene, Bruce mentions Steve Trevor and he's just an unnecessary dick. Batman is brutal, he is honest, but he's never a dickhead unnecessarily. And then Diana is sexualized way too much, and I hate that. Uh, and then, obviously, not knowing how much of Cyborg's story was cut out, if you just look at it on the surface. He's not handled very well. Barry's treated as an idiot. And then Aquaman, it's... 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 It's tricky. It's really tricky. Though, saying that, all the actors did their best with the situation they were put in, and I don't fault any of them. So... Getting positive with Justice League, as hard as it is, if we get positive for a moment, I'd say the best thing about it is see, is the fact that we got to see these characters on the big screen for the first time. It wasn't how we were supposed to see them. Granted, if you just look at it as a Justice League film, just, just as that, and the fact that it was in cinemas for the first time, that for me is the best thing about it. It's not... The fact, that, the fact that that's the only good thing, yeah, I know, but that is something that I can look at and say, yes, that is good. And then as well, the opening scene with Batman fighting the goon. Yes, when you look at it from a filmmaker standpoint, the lighting and just a lot of how it's filmed is just bad. And I know some people say, oh, Batman so casually called him Alfred with that goon nearby. Which, yeah, that's a good point, but do you really think this low-life thug is going to search for every Alfred in Gotham? That's a bit of a reach. And then as well, people say Batman left him to escape. No, he was tied up. It's not that big of a leap to say Batman off screen called Gordon. It's not, it's not a big leap. I'm not saying it defends all the bad moments in the film, but some people, and they're too proud to admit this, some people give the film more shit than it deserves. For me, the more shit should go to the people behind the scenes, Joss Whedon, Jeff Johns, and all the people at WB that did what they did to Zack's work. I will admit, seeing Batman, when that guy comes out of that window robbing, you see Batman stood up, sat on the gargoyle, and then when the guy turns around and pulls his gun out, you see Batman just grapple over, like, really quickly. And then when he does the slow motion, backflip, and the way he wraps the gun up, then drops him and goes, Fear. They can smell it. And that cool little bit with the grapple gun, well, not grapple gun, uh, with the gauntlet, like that. There are some cool moments. It's really tricky because I want to try and talk about the good things, but it's, it's really, really hard to do so because, oh, if we want to, as I said, I've tried saying the good things. So as we wrap up, I'll just go over some of the worst things about it. For me, obviously, what how the cast were treated, how Zach's work was treated, but as well... I don't, know if, I don't know why I want to bring this up, but it's just in the back of my mind. Just 
the whole existence of Danny Elfman on the project. Like, no one's denying that the Batman eighty nine theme is brilliant. No one's denying that the, the, the no one's denying that the, that the John Williams Superman score is amazing. But what I really fucking hated about Danny Elfman with the film was that when he was asked about the Batman theme, he said, "Oh no, there's only been one Batman theme, and that's mine." Pardon my language here, but that is an arrogant cunt of a statement to make. It was just when I saw that interview, I was like. Oh, it really rubbed me the wrong way. More so the fact that Junkie XL had been kicked off the project and Danny Elfman had been brought in. Like, ugh, I, I, did, I didn't, didn't like it. I didn't like it. I did not like it. And then with Superman's theme, it is beautiful, but it it doesn't it doesn't fit with Henry Cavill's Superman. Keaton's '89 theme doesn't fit with Affleck. Like, they 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 aren't they were not designed for those versions of the character, and they really, they really don't work, like, as I say, I love the Dark Knight theme, but that would not work with Affleck, it, and it, I, I just didn't, I didn't like what the studio, because I don't even know what the studio was fucking thinking, um, but it, it's, and it, obviously this is a separate topic for another video, which I will probably do, probably do at some point, but it really annoys me how WB was so obsessed and so focused on trying to do a Marvel film, that they tore apart something that is absolutely beautiful, and I'll say that again, absolutely beautiful. I guarantee you, had Zack Snyder's Justice League come out in cinemas and had a box office run, I bet my life it would have dethroned Endgame. I guarantee that. And I know it's a very hard bet, but I guarantee, I am dead certain it would have done that. I, I, it just would have, it just, it just would have, and people can argue against it, and that's fair enough, but... I stand by that. Overall, Justice League is an okay film. It is a complete bastardization of Zack's work, and it's a terrible look and portrayal of those characters. But, but, it is not the worst film ever made. Okay? It's like Batman and Robin. It is god awful, but it is not impossible to enjoy. And furthermore, with Justice League, you are not a villain if you enjoy it. It is not a crime to have a Blu-ray of both versions. I, from a moral standpoint, just fucking refuse to. But I will not shit on someone if they have it. Like, Ben has, a, ben has the Blu-ray, and we meme it, but I don't have a go at him for it. I have said, oh, you better burn that thing, and he, he says he will. Um, but I don't, I don't hit anybody who has it, because for a long time, we thought that's all we were going to have. But I, I refuse to give up and ref refuse to stop believing. So, um, so overall, what are your guys' thoughts on Justice League? If you haven't seen it, don't watch it. Do not waste your time. I would much rather recommend you watch the true version of the film. Like my friend Lewis, who we wa who I watched, well, one of the few, because when we watched the Snyder Cut, we watched like a bunch of us. He was one of the people, and he said to me, he hasn't seen the 2017 version. And I've told him, do not watch it. If you have not seen Justice League, do not watch it. That is the only version you need to see. Trust me. If you want to, then I I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but I, I would not recommend watching it. As an analysis, I mean, you can just watch videos comparing the scene, but if you really want to, to compare, go for it. I've seen it enough times to know the comparisons, and I stand by this. I will never, ever watch that version again. Ever. The only version that exists for me is Zack Snyder's Justice League. I love set calling it that, but if I say Justice League, I mean that version, because that is the only version that exists. And I don't care what WB says, no one with a brain is classing that version as canon. That version is canon. We will get sequels, we will get the air cut, we will get the backfleck film, and we will get so much more. I promise. Hashtag... Restore the Snyderverse. I can't wait to review Zack Snyder's Justice League next. It'll be in a few weeks because my girlfriend Lucy's coming to see me soon, which I can't wait. I haven't seen him in just about six months and we are planning to watch all the DC films. I'm thinking it could be really cool to do a video called My Girlfriend vs. the DCEU, which, not that she's against it, but that's a really cool title. And then as well, when I review the Snyder Cut, it could be good to do, it could be fun to do with her and because she's very encouraging when I get talking about this stuff and I get passionate about it and I don't know, it could be fun. What do you guys think? But she's definitely going to be there for the Birds of Prey one because we watched it together. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon.
Bye. I'm a living legend. You ain't heard yet. You not get the message. From the moment that I'm stepping in, I get a couple weapons. Yeah, I turn to a beast when I'm repping. I'm a living legend. 